It is very rare for a married couple not to have problems. And this is normal because people come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different ways of thinking, difference in accumulated experience in life, and therefore the way of handling matters differ and judging matters also differs and therefore problems arise. Sometimes problems can lead to divorce while other times if the couple address the issue and work on it then it gets resolved. The result of the problem and whether or not it leads to divorce depends on two things. The type of problem and the second thing is how to handle the problem, how to tackle the issue. You see many problems can be avoided before they take place if we avoid the causes of problems and can be solved if we address them properly, properly meaning Islamically. There are many reasons that lead to marital problems and conflict. The first and foremost, the most important of all, is undermining sins. See, when one or, or both of the spouses easily finds no problem in sinning, then the natural result is that Allah will forsake him or her. The consequence is that the wife becomes a rebellion wife, a rebellious wife, and the husband becomes or starts to re resent his wife hate his wife and therefore becomes aggressive and harsh and then problems start and it becomes a war in the house. One of the Salaf said, I can see the result of my shortcomings in the behavior of my wife and my animal. On the other hand, if the couple are Allah conscious, are pious, then it is difficult for problems to find their way into their hearts. And when they do happen, then they're easily solved and resolved. Why? Because these two men and, wo and women, these two resort to Islam, refer to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, to tackle their matters and therefore find solutions much faster and easier when compared to those who are, who are far from the path of Allah. Another reason is neglecting rights. Each of the spouses has a right over the other one. And fulfilling these rights motivates the other one to fulfill his or hers. It becomes easier as a token of appreciation, they would fulfill like theirs are being fulfilled. But if one is negligent, then the other one starts getting back on him or her. Or he, he didn't do this or she didn't do this, then I'm not going to do this. Now this, of course, lacks faith here. Because you're not supposed to deal with people as they deal with you. You're supposed to deal with people as Allah wants you to deal with them. Fulfill what is upon you, the right on you. And ask Allah for what you has due to you. Another serious matter that is very destructive in marriages is the interference of relatives in marital problems. And the unfortunate uh, 
matter here is that in many cases, the couples themselves invite the relatives to interfere in their lives for the simplest problems. And when this happens, especially with the lack of practice or commitment on the part of the relatives and the lack of wisdom, destruction happens. Each side starts suggesting and giving advices so they think, right? That end up ruining the relationship. A lot of times couples dispute, right? Argue. And they can do that in the morning and by evening time they're, they're very fine with each other, right? And they go back to normal life. However, if others are asked to interfere, when you broaden the circle, when you increase, increase the number in a problem, it becomes a challenge maintaining it and putting an end to it. A pleasant end to it. Related to this is jealousy between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. And it's an interchangeable jealousy. It's known that a mother-in-law, rather, the mother is jealous from her daughter-in-law and the wife is jealous from her mother-in-law, right? The husband should be very wise in tackling this very, very sensitive issue. Because he has two people, both of whom have rights on him, the mother on one hand, and the, uh, the wife on the other. So he needs to be wise in how to deal with each individually whilst fulfilling the right of each. The unfortunate thing here is that some husbands, because it's my mom, then I can be unfair to my wife. Well, that's not fair. And that's un-Islamic. On the other hand, some wives... And this is very naive, but it happens a lot. They start comparing themselves to his mother. Well, that's a losing batter. Never put your husband, give your heart, husband the choice to make either me or her. You lose. It's a losing baller, battle. This is his mom. He cannot say, mom, you're divorced. So don't make him go and make a hard decision which you will regret. The wife needs to remember that the mother has the loftiest rank. So she should not challenge that rank to see how much he loves her. Well, he loves you, but he loves his mom. When you have a problem with your wife or your husband, stop bringing everything in the past to this moment and start listing it. Well, remember when we first got married, you did this. And then the second year, you did that. And when this happened, you did... What good is this? It only enrages the person in front of you and makes him... A volcano that's about to explode. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, he said a believing man should not hate a believing woman. If he finds something unpleasant in her manners or in her qualities, then he will certainly find other qualities that he is pleased with. And that's why women were also warned, and this is also in Al-Bukhari, they were warned against being so negative with regards to the mistakes of the husband. The Prophet ﷺ said, a man will be good and kind to his wife for ages. And then at the first mistake he makes, she would say, I've never seen anything good from you. You've never been good to me. You've, did the, you've done this and you've done this and this happened and that happened. That 
only adds insult to injury. That does not solve problems, it only increases them. So when there is a problem, forget the past. Deal with the, with the present and try to solve it. Money problems. Money problems are serious problems between a husband and a wife. And they happen for two reasons. One reason from the wife's side and one reason from the husband's side. The wife's side is when the wife is too demanding. Her expectations, financial that is, are very high. I want this and we want that and we, let's get this and let's buy that. Especially when the husband's income is limited and the bills are high. This will create a problem. Now, the problem from the husband's side is when the man is stingy. When he does not spend enough. When he does not fulfill the needs of the household. And the way out of this is for the woman to be considerate. This is her partner. And this is their life. Not his and hers. And for the man to fear Allah Azza wa Jal and fulfill what is due on him and to remember. As the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, he said, the greatest charity is that which one spends on his household. Is a bite that you place in the mouth of your wife, what is what exactly he said. Imagine, you are required to feed her, but with every bite you place in her mouth, meaning you provide for her, not physically place it in her mouth. For every bite you provide for her, you're greatly rewarded by Allah Hassan. Live in married life as partners. You see, many people forget that the husband or the wife is a body and a soul. We have the tendency to deal with the body and neglect the soul. I'm exposed to many problems resulting from the wife having her friends, her visitations to her family, her this and her that, and for working women, it makes the case worse, right? And the husband goes out with his friends, he dines out, they go out to the, uh, to the beach or to the park or this or that, right? And the relationship becomes more like classmates or colleagues than a husband and a wife. And the only, prop, the only relationship they would have is that intimate relationship. It is as if this is the only thing about marriage. A husband and a wife must know that spending time with one another, sharing activities with one another, is extremely healthy to their relationship and it is a prevention measure for problems. Routinic lives. You know, after a few years of marriage, especially with children and all that, life becomes very routinic. The man goes to work, he comes back, the, the wife wakes up in the morning, she cleans the house, she cooks, she takes care of the children. If she's a, a working woman, then she goes to work and has to cook in the, the, the night before, so on and so forth. Life becomes boring and frustrating and that's when each of them starts getting it on the other. So we have to break this routine system in life. We have to be romantic which is a word I think many when men and women don't even know the meaning of. Not literally, but practically. 
I'm going to ask you guys, brothers and sisters, when was the last time you sent a message to your wife for no reason, saying, honey, I love you? For no other reason but to say, I do love you. And that the 20, 10, 15, 30 years that we spent together only added an increased love in my heart to you. When was that last done? A real story was told to me. A man sent such a message to his wife. So immediately she picked up the phone and called him and she said, Honey, are you okay? She thought that something is wrong with the man. He had an accident and he's about to die. Why? This is not funny. This is very saddening when the wife only thinks of a disaster that has taken place to her husband. When he expresses his emotions to her, which is something that he has to naturally and continuously. And likewise for the wife. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive our shortcomings. High expectations. This happens before marriage and after marriage. Many young men and women have the wrong perception of, of uh, married life. They, have these, they live in this rosy world of theirs. They build their own world of nothing but sweetness, right? Expecting to enter into paradise as soon as they get married. But when they're struck with reality, with the first problem, they don't know how to handle it, and each one starts blaming the other one for the, for the mistake or for the problem. It's very easy to walk into a marriage with lofty expectations. It's very easy for the husband or the wife to walk into this marriage thinking that it will live up to the image you have or they have in their minds. And this happens also after marriage. See, the couple expect that, okay, now I know, I've known him for such and such a period. I've known her and I taught her the way I like things done. You know, she knows what pleases me and he knows what displeases me. So they expect that since now we both know each other, then it should be done. Well, the solution is to be realistic and to remember that he, we're human beings. We make mistakes, we forget. So lower your standard of, of, of expectations and be realistic and deal with matters as they come. Stress is a very strong factor of marital problems. Stress can result from many different things. Problems with one's family or the spouse's family or from upbringing children. It's a very, very, very difficult challenge to raise children, especially nowadays. So this can be a source of stress for working people. Stress at work, problems with colleagues or with the boss. All these are sources of stress. Now when does the problem begin between them? Is when these sources of stress resulting in that stress is brought into the married life. You had a problem with your boss. You had a problem with your father or with your mother. Let that be, be between you and them. You want to share that with your husband and wife. That's fine. But don't make that stress released on them. Another reason of problems due to stress is when one of the two is inconsiderate of the feelings 
of the other who is stressed out for whatever reason. And the solution for this is to be mindful of the state of mind and heart of the person in front of you and be considerate of his situation or her situation. Lack of communication. Communication is crucial for marital problems to be resolved. You see, people look at things differently. Their perception of matters differ. The number nine, if you draw it on the floor and one person stands at the bottom of it, whilst the other is standing at the top of it, this man is going to see it a nine, while the other is going to see it a six. Though they're both looking at the very same thing. Give people the benefit of the doubt, of the doubt. communicate. Communicate. You see a problem, express it gently and wisely with your wife or your husband. You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to make a, a, a fight in every matter just because you both look at, two different, at, at the same thing in two different ways. Communication resolves this problem. Upbringing of children is a very challenging matter, as I just said, and it causes many problems between the husband and the wife. Because, you see, each one of them has his own way and understanding of parenting, of cultivating children. He thinks that this is the proper way, she thinks this is the proper way, and then the clash happens. What couples need to remember is that this is a shared responsibility. And that the ultimate objective to achieve is what is in the best interest of the child. Not to prove that my way is right, I am correct, my manner is better. My That's not the issue here. Let's not make our children pay the price of our difference of how they should be cultivated. Many couples, and with the first problem, they decide that the best solution is divorce. They give in. They give in to the devil. And why do I say they give in to the devil? Because this is what the Prophet ﷺ told us, that the devil sends his soldiers every day, and then at the, end, they, at the end of the day, they come back and he would ask each of them, what did you do? I made him commit zina, I made him drink alcohol, I made him kill. I, and he would say, you haven't done much, you haven't done. Until he hears a person say, I continue to whisper in his ear and her ear until I made him divorce her. The devil say, would say, you are the one, you come next to me. Where in fact divorce should be the last of the choices. We need to be wise. We need to remember that this is a very strong bond between the man and the woman. And for those, especially for those who have been married for a while. Look at your husband's gray hair and your wife's gray hair. And remember that you took him or her in his youth or her youth. You grew up together in this relationship. This, these wrinkles should make you love her and him more because they reflect the long years both of you were together. We need to remember the sweet times the sweet moments we enjoyed together, we shared together. And find a way for wisdom to intercede between us. And resort to the manner of Muhammad in solving problems. 
we ask Allah to guide our hearts. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna hudatan muhtadeen. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna hudatan muhtadeen. Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna wa aafina wa'afu anna.